This week, Stephen Jordan head to the Black Hills of South Dakota to summit the area's tallest peak, Black Elk Peak. Join us for episode seven of Backpacker Get Out More TV. Welcome back to Backpacker Get Out More TV. I'm your host, Randy Propster, and this week I am excited to take you on an adventure into the Black Hills of South Dakota. Before we get too far though, make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and hit that bell for notifications so that you will be informed every time we bring you another episode of Backpacker Get Out More TV. Before we join Steve and Jordan on their Black Hills adventure, I want to remind you that you should sign up for this week's gear giveaway. Every single week, we have a new prize pack that will go out to one lucky winner, and I would love for it to be you. So please find that link in the description below and sign yourself up. You could win an amazing prize pack from brands like Darn Tough, Jet Boil, Lakey, Mystery Ranch, Oboes, Sawyer Products, Sea to Summit, Yellowstone Select Kentucky Bourbon, and Visit NC Smokies. I also want to remind you that you have a standing open invitation to come explore in Steve and Jordan's backyard in the Great Smoky Mountains area of North Carolina. Beautiful sights, tasty beverages. That's what it's all about if you ask Mark Servaro, the Director of Operations at Beer Water, <laughs> Bear Water that is, Brewery, and he wants to invite you to come explore his Haywood County home right now. We're at Bear Water's Brewing Company at our new location in Maggie Valley, uh, Bear Water's Creekside. Uh, this is one of Two breweries, our main brewery, the main facility is in Canton. We are definitely a destination. We're on the Pigeon River. Uh, we're a destination for all outdoor enthusiasts, uh, kayakers, hikers, even Maggie Valley here, this location in Creekside. Our proximity to some amazing trailheads is unbelievable. Over in Canton off 215, we have access to a, a bunch of beautiful trailheads over there. Up here, we're just down the road from Cherokee National Forest. We have the Blue Ridge Parkway that runs very close to both breweries. Come on out to Haywood County, enjoy all our trailheads, enjoy our rivers, our creeks, and then stop into one of our wonderful breweries and refresh yourself with an ice cold pint of some amazing beer. Beautiful sights, tasty beverages, that makes it pretty tough to beat the Great Smoky Mountain area of North Carolina. But I will tell you this, the Black Hills of South Dakota absolutely spectacular which is why i'm so excited to take you on that adventure this week on our way out to the black hills you cannot miss stopping in to roaming around what a fantastic outfitter right in the heart of rapid city a place where bridget and her team know everything there is to know about preparing you for a Black Hills adventure. We were really excited to have Steve and Jordan stop in, learn more about roaming around from Bridget, learn more about their Black Hills destination from Bill, and also get an instant upgrade talking about the Mystery Ranch Y-shaped zipper in the Scree 32 from fantastic associate Duran there at roaming around. Let's check in now to get this adventure started in the Black Hills. My name is Bridget Mahajek and I'm the owner of Roman Around. Uh, we have been in business for 13 years and we are located in the heart of Rapid City, South Dakota in the Black Hills of South Dakota. Um, initially when we started the store we were definitely just a travel and outdoor store or travel store and we mainly did things for people to travel anywhere in the world. Uh, books, maps, we have one of the largest map collections anywhere in the United States. Um, we did luggage, we did just anything that was toiletry kits and packing essentials. And once we turned into an outdoor store, we you know, picked up anything that dealt with that. We have backpacks, we have tents, we have climbing, um, footwear, anything that will help you get into the outdoors and um, have a nice time, we have that now. Rapid City is lucky to be on bordering the Black Hills National Forest. It's 1.2 million acres of beautiful ponderosa pines, perfect for your outdoor enthusiasts. Whether you like to hike or bike, to go boating, kayaking, fishing, 
uh, rock climbing, it has it all. Definitely scratches that itch to get out more and enjoy nature. And we're also fortunate to have two 100 mile trails. So whether you're getting into a trail, and even if you're experienced, you can, um, in the hiking world, you can hop on the Mickelson Trail. You don't have to do all 108 miles, but you can just pop in here or there. There's plenty of trailheads along the way. If you want that more intimate, remote, and rustic kind of feel, hop on the Centennial Trail, which is 111 miles long. Um, you go through the Cathedral Spires area, and you've got the long spires of granite peaks popping out. So just beautiful, you can't miss those. So your pack needs to do a lot of things for you. It needs to be big enough to carry your gear. It needs to be strong enough to take the combined load, but it also needs to keep you organized out there on the trail. Enter Mystery Ranch. This is a cool company with a background of doing uh, gear for first responders and troops alike. And so they're really good at making things that are strong, dependable, and fully functional in the moment when you need it. And you can see that no better than with the Y zipper. Uh, one quick pull on this and we are instantly into the main load of the pack. So if you're missing your lucky pair of socks, you can dive right down into the bottom of it and grab them right then that instant. The other payoff for this system is there's no space lost inside of the pack. Sometimes when we're just loading a top loading pack, all we're doing is creating dead zone. We don't want that. We want the pack to be stable and to ride nice and firm on your back. I can use my rain shell here, kind of like packing material, and I can make sure that every single iota of this is filled. We're using all the space. It's riding nice and stable, and that's going to make you a happy, better hiker out on the trail. And that's what makes it worthy of an instant upgrade. Here at Roman Around, we have a lot of options for travel, for consignment, for rentals, for outdoor gear. We also can help with shuttling if you need shuttled um, for any of your hiking adventures. We um, do that throughout the Black Hills. Um, we help you with all of your adventures, whether they're um, wintertime or summertime. If you'd like to know anything else about our store, we have um, Facebook, we have social media, we have Instagram. You can go to our website, www.roamingaround.com. Mystery Ranch is on a mission to make the world's best backpacks for a wide variety of outdoor enthusiasts. Built to be extremely configurable with a concentration on organization and accessibility. Plus, these bags are bomb-proof. They are purpose-built to assure not only usability, but durability. To learn more about Mystery Ranch backpacks, visit mysteryranch.com or check out the links in the description below. The team at Roman Around really does know their stuff. And they're one of those great outfitters that I think of as a gateway to adventure, a jumping off point, the place you should start your adventure, not only to get the gear that you need, but the information, the skills, the knowledge from the locals that are gonna allow you to set yourself on the right path to ensure success. While Steve and Jordan were headed out from their North Carolina home to the Black Hills of South Dakota, they stopped off in Peoria, Illinois as well. Another great gateway to adventure in that town, a shop called Bushwhacker. And Rich and his team, again, top-notch staff, they know their stuff, definitely a place you should stop in and pay a visit. While we were there, we had a chance to talk to Corey, who also gave us an opportunity to dodge a pitfall. You want to be on that right path to success, you want to avoid those pitfalls, and we're going to do that by learning more, not only about Bushwhacker from Rich, but about how the foundation in your oboe's footwear can be even more important than the height of your shoe when it comes to dodging the pitfall of a sprained ankle. Hi, I'm Rich Pastine, owner of Bushwhacker. Bushwhacker's a jack-of-all-trades outdoor specialty store. We've been in Peoria since 1976, so 44 years. We started out as rock climbing, cross-country skiing, and hardcore climbing. Uh, we've evolved into different uh, specialties. When all the hippies grew up, got married in 1980, it's, we stopped backpacking a whole lot, and we've evolved into windsurfing, downhill skiing, patio furniture, and now we do a whole lot of bikes as well. 
but uh, everybody around here has different likes and dislikes and what they like to do outside, but whatever it is, we like to help people go outside and, and have fun. Hi, I'm Corey. I work with the shoes here at Bushwhacker in Peoria, Illinois, and we're just gonna talk about dodging that pitfall of rolling your ankle out on the trail. So that's one thing we get customers coming in for, uh, first time hikers, they're going out west. They're like, well I probably need that tall one because I don't wanna roll my ankle out there. And that's, you know, a valid concern. But what Oboe says is, the, uh, the risk of rolling your ankle can be taken care of with the foundation of the shoe. So they start off with having a very stable base uh, underfoot with the sole. Not only does it cover a lot of area, it's nice and wide, but it's sort of rounded on the edges. So it's less of a tip over once you come to the edges of your feet, but it allows a little more of a roll, a little play there as you uh, as you might step over uneven surfaces um, and roll to the either edge. Now the other part of it, uh, that foundation with oboes is their O-fit insole. And the insole in these oboes are it's more structured than what you typically find in most, I guess what you'd call like a stock insole with other shoes and boots. But uh, they have High density foam, EVA, it's really built up. Nice supportive arch. Uh, it keeps that arch from collapsing too much when you get tired uh, and want that ankle to roll in some. The other part of it is um, they do put a little extra foam here, urethane under the ball of the foot and the heel for some added cushion that makes it feel good. Uh, less fatigue while you're walking and therefore less tired ankles and feet. If you haven't been to our store, uh, stop by our website, bushwhacker.com. We're also on social media, Instagram, Facebook, and you can check out a lot of the cool stuff that we have in the store. So if you can't come in in person, at least stop and see us online. Obos Footwear. We plant a tree for every pair sold. One million and counting. <laughs> That's a lot of f***ing trees. The Black Hills are full of abundant outdoor opportunities, and Steve and Jordan prove that to us with an adventure to start their adventure. That's right, before they hit the trailhead to hike in and backpack in those Black Hills, they decided to walk into the river and spend some time hanging out high above. That's right, slackline style, highline adventure in the Black Hills. What a way to get this week started. I hope you enjoy. Let's join Stephen Jordan as the adventure begins now. All right, everybody, we just got to the Black Hills. I have some friends in the area that are getting into some pretty wild stuff, and we thought you would uh, enjoy it. So we're putting on our day packs for once, and we're going to head down this little canyon and see some high lining and some water lining. Let's go.
All right, so we're here in South Dakota, finally getting started on the trail. We're gonna do a loop in the uh, Black Elk Wilderness. Gonna check off uh, South Dakota's highest peak and uh, go swimming, I think, after. Here we go. All raspberries. No way. <laughs> Stop one, Little Devil's Tower. Got the, what are these guys called again? Cathedral Spires. Cathedral Spires behind me. And then our goal, way out here, see the tower up there? That's Black Elk Peak, or uh, formerly known as Mount Harney? Harney? Harney. Yeah. Harney. If you're out on trail for an extended period of time, nature will call. And I'm talking about, uh, you know, the bowel movements that nature calls upon. That being the case, there is certainly a skill that every backpacker should know. So I want you to grab your Sea to Summit pocket trowel and prepare yourself to learn how to properly dispose of waste, human waste, the next time you're out there on trail in this week's Skills Every Backpacker Should Know. everything going on in the world right now we're seeing a really big influx of people who are headed outside hitting the trails exploring their own backyards which is super awesome but one thing that's really important to talk about is disposing of waste properly so if people are getting outside and not fully understanding what they're getting themselves into or what the protocols are um, kind of how to respect the wildlife out there um, it can get really gross really quickly. So one thing that you really need to know before you hit the trail is how to go to the bathroom in the woods. There's different regulations in different areas. So the kind of overall standard is to actually bury your poop. And I'll show you guys my kit and how to do that. But uh, basically do your research beforehand because sometimes that may not be enough. Some areas you may actually have to pack out your poop. Um, so just kind of wanting to be sure that you're you're aware of what that looks like. but. Um, I know we've we've had conversations with people and we've seen it ourselves of people just going to the bathroom like a couple feet off the trail and not really doing anything with it and not only is that super disgusting but that also attracts wildlife to that area as well so what you want to do like I said is bury it which is called a cat hole so this is my bathroom kit it's really small I've got the Sea to Summit deuce shovel it's a titanium shovel it's really lightweight it doesn't even like feel like I'm holding a shovel so you're gonna take that and you're gonna dig a hole. It needs to be about six inches deep, about six inches in diameter, just a really good solid hole. Once you have gone to the bathroom, I've got my toilet paper here. I like to keep it in a Ziploc bag, that way if it rains, it doesn't get my toilet paper wet. These Sea to Summit bags are also waterproof, so that helps there. You do have to pack out your toilet paper, um, so that's just something else to be aware of. And then just the other two things that I've got in my personal kit, I've got a little bit of hand sanitizer, and then as a female, I carry a tampon with me at all times. I just find that helpful. Um, ladies, if you are on your period in the woods, that is something else that you have to carry out with you. You can't bury your tampons. Nobody wants to see that. Um, if you have any questions or any concerns about doing that in the backcountry, feel free to message me. I'm happy to talk about it, happy to explain how I personally do that. Um, but that is essentially how you how you go to the bathroom in the woods. You wanna make sure that you're at least 200 yards away from any water source when you're going to the bathroom. Um, I like to make a, you know, almost like a game out of it of where can I find the most beautiful view to go to the bathroom. And there's also multiple different um, stances you can take when you're going to the bathroom, just to comfort wise, just figure out what works for you. I know it's something that can be really uncomfortable to talk about, but I think it's a big concern for a lot of people. Um, so just kind of breaking down those walls and have those conversations with people. And once you've started going to the bathroom in the woods, it's like one of the best experiences. So it might be scary at first, but don't knock it till you try it.
I always love it when some of the equipment that I carry on my backpack just to enhance my outdoor experience is actually being utilized to do great things around the globe. And Sawyer products and their water filtration systems is the perfect example of how a product that just keeps me happy and healthy out on trail is actually allowing others to have the vital resources like clean water that they need for survival. So I really enjoyed the opportunity to talk to Daryl Larson, International Director for Sawyer Products, and learn more about the amazing projects that they have all around the globe helping folks with that critical resource of clean water. So now I want to bring in Daryl Larson, who has to have one of the coolest gigs going, because not only do you get to do really good deeds and make the world a better place, but you get to see some pretty incredible locations along the way. So Daryl, you are the international director with Sawyer Products of Sawyer International. And for our audience that doesn't know, Sawyer Products that they think of, they're like, all right, they keep the bugs off me when I'm out hiking. I'd run my water through that filter so that the creek doesn't make me feel sick. But, but what I think they don't know is that you're supplying filters globally. I mean, around the world in places that are supplying vital resources like clean drinking water can change the lives of so many people and it is changing the lives and you're seeing it on the regular basis so i'm hoping you can teach our audience more about that impact more about what sawyer's doing on that international scale and even some insights as to like how did, how'd you get that gig it's it's a feel good gig right yeah it's it's like the dream job for me um i have my background really in working in, in nonprofits. i worked for a house building organization that was building houses for the poor down in Mexico. And while I was there, we got really involved in different kinds of appropriate technologies. And one of them was water. And, and I was really drawn to that. And so kind of throughout that process in 2008, I got uh, started a, a nonprofit that works over primarily in the country of Fiji, supply, supplying clean water in the rural villages of Fiji. There's over 100 islands in Fiji that are inhabited and the most rural ones still do not, do not have access to clean water. So when I was going over there, I was trained in, in a different technology and found the Sawyer filters in 2008. That's when they came out. We took them down, we tested them in the local lake, you know, to make sure they removed all the bacteria, like they said, and, you know, make sure I scooped the water where the ducks were pooping the most and everything to make sure it was nice and gnarly. You know? and, uh, and sure enough, it removed everything. So I said, these are great. So we, we took the first filters over in 2008, over to Fiji. And really when that nonprofit started, we kind of got our niche in the sustainability side of the Sawyer filters. How long could these last and what did it take for them to last? So focusing on behavior change with people. How many times did you have to go back, uh, give continuing education, follow up with people to make sure they were using their filters on a, on a regular basis and cleaning them every day? so that they would last for years because these filters can last, you know, 10 or more years. We've had them in the field. So we, we focused on that and then focused on uh, data collection and tracking what changed in people's lives. Not just that we went to a village and installed 50 filters and took some pictures, but that we were able to actually track before they got the filters, how much diarrhea they had after they got the filters over a period of follow-ups how much did we reduce their diarrhea? How many more days did uh, kids go to school that they used to miss? How many more days did adults go to work that they used to have to miss because of waterborne sickness? How, many, how much purchase water savings or medical savings would a family get that would be money back in their pockets as a result of the water filter? So that's kind of how we got our niche and we were kind of liaising with Sawyer along the way. And uh, somewhere in 2015, I got a call from the owner of Sawyer and said, meet me at a restaurant. And he looked me in the eyes and said, are you ready to quit your job? And I was like, wow. And then the dream job began getting to work probably. And I, I'm not just saying this because I, I work there. One of the most socially responsible companies that I've ever seen that really, really does it. They really change the world. 
Yeah, I, I agree with you. I love Kurt. I love everything they're doing at Sawyer. Just the mission behind it from the top down, the, the ease of use of the product. I mean, that's so important for, like you said, just to make sure when you take it to these communities that, that that's not something that has to be, you know, overly maintained as much as it's just kind of, you know, that, you know, simple maintenance will go a long way. Keep those filters, keeping people safe. That data you talk about, I know I've seen numbers where, you know, Fiji now, uh, a nation that you went to and said, man, I didn't even realize they had a water problem. And now it turns out about 50% of the you know, population that doesn't have access to clean water are using Sawyer filters. It sounds like you're saying Liberia, I, in our conversation earlier, same deal. I mean, not, basically you know, coast to coast, that entire country is gonna be supplied with clean drinking water. Things that before this technology, just no way that's gonna happen, right? So it's changing yeah. the world, am I right? Yeah. Yeah, the, the, the organization that we're working with in Liberia, they actually had a mission to, to bring clean water to Liberia, border to border, every man, woman, and child uh, by December of this year, 2020. They started back in around 2007. They were drilling wells, um, but when they, they got to like this last 20% of the population that they couldn't get well rigs into, they couldn't reach the rural, you'd, you'd have to you know, drive your motorcycle as far as you could go, cross a creek in a canoe, and then walk for hours, you know, to the middle of nowhere in a village just to give access to clean drinking water. And so we got linked up with that project. And as a result, by December of this year, there's gonna be 130,000 Sawyer water filters in the rural bush. And uh, we had a research study that was done on those filters and worked up all the data. So when, when all the groups that got trained, there's like 200 Liberians that are actively have gone and we've assessed every single village in the country and, and have gone to every village with an installation of the filters, a two week follow up, an eight week follow up, and then a one year spot check. And uh, when we started, 36% of the, of the families were experiencing diarrhea within a two week period before they got their water filters. Just two weeks after they got their sort of water filter, the number dropped from 36% down to 2.9%. Wow. At the eight week mark, it dropped down to 1.5%. And at the one year spot check, we did a randomized spot check of the country, the zero to four year olds were down to 0.6% of diarrhea rates. So just dramatically wiping out the waterborne sickness in, in that country. And um, it's spectacular, right? It's gotta feel good, you know? I know it feels good. I see the smile on your face, you know? It's so great to, to talk to you. I'm so happy that we're able to, to you know, enlighten our audience, let folks know that, you know, that are out there backpacking with, you know, packing out that lightweight Sawyer product because it's quick, easy, convenient, lightweight. That same filter is changing the world. It's, it's you know, it's keeping people healthy, safe in places all over the globe. And I love that you're out there doing what you do. So thank you on behalf of myself, on behalf of Backpacker, on behalf of our audience. Continue the good work, my man. We appreciate it and look forward to continuing to follow your journeys. Tell us where we can learn more. If we wanted to donate, if we wanted to help your, your cause, you know, where do we find you? What's a good website? What, uh, where do we follow you on social stuff? Yeah, actually, if you go on to international.sawyer.com, you're going to see a list of all of the NGOs that work with the Sawyer products. There's, I mean, there's so many great organizations that are using the Sawyer filters all around the world. So you can kind of go there and you can choose the country that you kind of love or kind of dig or whatever. And then you'll see where all those organizations work. And that's a great place that you can find a, a really awesome organization that will deliver these to the forgotten ones all around the world. Fantastic. Daryl, thank you so much for joining us and keep up the good work, my man. From staying hydrated to staying bug free, Sawyer products have been a staple in my pack for years now. Today we're taking a look at Sawyer water filtration systems. Whether you choose to squeeze or let gravity do the work, staying hydrated is a key part of backpacking. And with their uh, lightweight design and ease of use, they've become my favorite pick for the backcountry. To learn more about these or any of Sawyer's products, head on over to Sawyer.com or visit the link in the description below. The view from the top of the highest peak in South Dakota, Black Elk Peak, is absolutely spectacular. I've had the pleasure of standing there myself, which is why I'm so excited that we get to share that view with you in this upcoming trail segment. We also get to share with you how your camp comforts can be improved by having an ultralight inflatable pad as part of your overnight system. 
Let's get back out and join the adventure with Steve and Jordan now. good spot we think we found a good spot to kick it for the night um, we're allowed to camp off trail here as long as you're far enough and this so happens to be far enough and it's got a pretty good view so we're gonna pitch the tent uh, get dinner going and I think we're gonna go on a little sunset hike back up uh, a little bit higher up to where we'll see it a little bit more When I first started backpacking, I had a really big concern that I wasn't gonna sleep well because how can you sleep as well on the ground as you do at home in your bed? But our friends at Sea to Summit are a company run by engineers and so they are constantly coming up with new ways to keep you warm and comfortable in the backcountry. For example, their ultralight insulated sleeping pad. So they have figured out that if you have these tiny little air pockets, you're gonna sleep more comfortably, you're gonna still stay warm, it's lightweight, and you're not gonna feel like you're gonna roll off the pad when you move, as opposed to having big channels of air, it's gonna kinda of push you around and make you feel a little wobbly. Another really awesome thing about this pad is that its stuff sack actually doubles as a pump to inflate it itself. So all you have to do is pull the inflate tab, attach them together, blow just a little breath, about six inches away from the bag, and then push it, stuff it all together, do that a couple times, and your pad is fully inflated. When you're ready to deflate the whole thing, you just pull the deflate tab, and this entire thing deflates in like five, six seconds, and then you can stuff it away and get going. Black Hills really are an absolutely fantastic backpacking destination and I highly suggest that you get yourself out there to South Dakota. If you're coming from the east and you want to stop off at another fantastic gateway to adventure, a specialty retailer that's been in business for a long time outfitting folks for all sorts of adventures, you should stop off in Iowa City at Finn and Feather. Brian and his team, again, top notch. They know their stuff. I want to show you more about Fen and Feather and have Brian introduce his shop 
and also take a closer look at how the lanky trekking pole and the importance of the appropriate height adjustment can make a big difference in your on-trail experience. Hi, I'm Brian Mildenstein at Fin and Feather in Iowa City, Iowa. We're a local full service outdoor store um, and we've been around since 1968. My parents were the ones who started the store by purchasing an old general, out, or general sporting goods store and uh, then getting rid of everything they didn't understand, which included all of the bats and balls. So now we're a, an outdoor store. We do a lot of different outdoor pursuits, including camping, hiking, backpacking, rock climbing, canoeing, kayaking, fishing, hunting, and assorted apparel that goes along with those ventures. Today we're going to take a closer look at leaky trekking poles and how to adjust them. Uh, trekking poles are oftentimes a not deemed an essential piece of equipment until you first use them and then uh, no one wants to leave home without them. So this is the Lecky Microvario Cortec. Um, it is pretty simple to assemble. So we're going to take these two three segments here and just push them together and then pull that to re hear a click. And now that's the basic pull height. From there, we want to adjust this. Um, so I can go all the way up to 130 centimeters here, which is actually my preferred length usually. Uh, I'm gonna get that to where my elbow makes roughly a 90 degree bend. Hand up through the bottom against this super flat, super thin um, leash. Uh, so that helps me to not have to grip so hard on the, on the shaft. And now I can hold and put all my weight on there without having to have such a tight fist. So now while hiking, this is going to assist in both stability, um, uh, ease of ascension. It also takes a lot of shock off your knees and ankles, especially while carrying a pack. Um, the height can change depending on whether or not you're going uphill or downhill. So typically we'd shorten these up to go uphill a little bit and lengthen them to go downhill. Sometimes for downhill, I even like to just get on top of this snake head here so that I can put it out in front of me and use it to help descend uh, in a more controlled manner. So that's a closer look at adjusting leaky trekking poles for everyone who's interested. So if you're in the Iowa City area, please stop in and visit us at Fin and Feather, or you can also visit us online at finfeather.com. Lucky trekking poles are a great addition to your pack to help with extra stability and help take the pressure off your knees and ankles. Lucky trekking poles come in a variety of lightweight materials and styles. The innovative handles are super comfortable and they offer a unique adjustable strap system. Plus, they break down really easily to store in your pack when you're not using them. To learn more about the products from Lucky, head on over to Lucky.com or click the link in the description below. I can't think of a better shop than one right in the heartland, right there in Iowa, Fin and Feather, to bring us this week's forgotten feature, because it's all about how important it is to consider where your gear is made. And we love the fact that Brian was able to point out to us, so that we don't forget, that Darn Tough is made right here in the U.S. of A. Hey and welcome to Forgotten Feature. Uh, we're, today we're looking at darn tough socks and you might wonder what, uh, what could you possibly not know about a pair of socks. But uh, one super cool feature that doesn't get highlighted enough about darn tough is that they're still all made in America. In fact, they're made in Vermont. And what's great about that in a year like this with COVID is that um, it's really unpredictable on getting a lot of things and places that are relying on lots of different sources to get them either their raw goods or to ship completed goods from another country um, are a little less predictable. And right now, uh, a company like Darn Tough is perfectly suited to continue the supply chain without a, a breakage in a time where things are harder to, to predict. Um, I have darn tough socks, not necessarily this pair, but I, I love the way they fit, first of all, and they're super tough in the heels and the toes, places where sometimes you find they've got this great pair of socks, but they wear out a little too quickly. 
Um, Darn Tough has those and they stand behind them even if uh, they do happen to wear out, which hardly I ever see it, but um, they have a almost silly guarantee for life that if you aren't happy after wearing them forever and they you find that they're not wearing quite like you think they should, they'll replace them for you. So uh, you kind of have that behind you. Although, honestly, I never see people take advantage of that because they're so happy with the socks in the first place that uh, they're more than willing to come and buy another pair. You can't take full advantage of hiking if you don't take good care of your feet, and that's why we love Darn Tough socks so much. They offer a variety of colors and designs for men and women. They're super comfortable because they're made from merino wool blend that's also antimicrobial so they don't get funky. And best of all, the socks are so durable that Darn Tough offers a lifetime warranty. To learn more about Darn Tough socks, go to darntough.com or click the link in the description below. Good morning. I don't know if you can see it, but the sun is rising. We're climbing out of here. Can't from that little hole down there. Yeah. All right, let's do it. So we got up, did a little alpine start, caught the sunrise on the top of Black Elf Peak, and now we're gonna make a little coffee, head down, snack, and make a big old breakfast of the truck before we head to Montana. So we just had a really awesome 24 hours in the Black Hills. We did a big loop, got to climb some big stuff, got to sleep by the spires, um, see some wildlife. Got to see a, a pond on top of a mountain. Yeah. I would have never thought that I would experience that. <laughs> what else do we have up there? Just incredible views. Yeah. Um, and you know, low mileage in, in such a short loop, we got to see a ton. And yeah. I think that was kind of like, my favorite part. Totally, the beautiful meadows with lots of wildflowers, and I mean, just constant views of the spires and the needles in the background, it was beautiful. It's pretty wild too, you'd think this area would be kind of harsh uh, with names like the Badlands and the Black Hills out here, but it seemed like every 15 feet, you could just reach off trail and grab a handful of raspberries. Yeah, Get a little, a little trail energy snack. and keep going. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, we're back at Sylvan Lake now. The parking lot's already getting full. It's only about nine o'clock, so I think we're gonna make a little French toast breakfast and then boogie out of here. Let's do it. Whether it's the start of your adventure or a great way to finish off your adventure, when you get to that trailhead and have access to a Jetboil Genesis cook system, you know that you can put it to the test making some really tasty French toast. Steve and Jordan show us exactly how in this week's What's Cooking. All right, so we just got off the summit of Black Elk Peak. We thought we were gonna make some trail French toast up there and watch the sunrise, but it was super windy. Uh, so we just made the best of it. Chugged some coffee, and I thought that we could use this opportunity to come down and show off our Genesis cook system. This is probably my favorite 
product by Jet Proil. It is a really rad cookware kit. Um, everything fits right here into this little uh, setup. And for me, like I cut down what I used to carry, it was like this big. So I really dig that. Um, it also comes with a pot with their signature flux rings. So we can make some pasta dishes or some rice real quick without wasting a lot of gas. Everything fits inside. Uh, it kind of folds out like that. Um, the windscreen's really great too. Um, but you know, two good burners. They're both uh, adjustable. They can simmer, they can get you know fully rip, and they've also got self-igniters on either side. Um, but something else that's really, really cool that I just wanted to throw out here, um, if you're making like a, a big dinner, like we made, uh, we did Thanksgiving on the trail once, so we could utilize something like this. And the half gen is another burner that comes with its pot, own pot setup, fits in this little guy. You can actually attach all three of them together, so you could be cooking off all of them and just really doing it up on the in the, in the woods. Can you hear about the side effects of my French toast? Uncontrollable wiggling. Happiness. <laughs> what do you think? Very good. All right, so we are post hike. I'm getting ready to do some editing and I thought, you know, it would get good with that, some bourbon. So what I'm showing y'all today is a, a legendary secret that I like to call the scavenger. It was a couple of things I scavenged out of the cooler and they turned out to work together really well. Uh, so here's the trick. A little bit of maple syrup, a little bit of splash of lime, a lot of bit of bourbon. And what I like to do is I'm going to Pour the maple syrup over the ice. Kind of experiment with how much you want. I like my drinks more bourbon flavored, so just it's it just a nice little addition. But then I pour some lime on the ice cubes. Throw a little bit of Steve Beam's magic in there. Stir. Oh, maybe I added a little bit too much lime there. Now, right, well, here's another legendary secret. Add a little bit more bourbon, add a little bit more syrup, you're good to go. Yellowstone bourbon is handcrafted in the state of Kentucky. These small batch whiskeys are the work of seventh generation craftsmen, resulting in a unique taste perfect for the trail. Plus, a portion of every bottle sold goes to helping preserve our national parks. Cheers to that. To learn more about the products from Yellowstone Bourbon, head on over to limestonebranch.com or click the link in the description below. I can't thank you enough for joining us this week on Backpacker Get Out More TV. If you like this content, please hit the like button, give us that thumbs up, share this video with your hiking, camping, and backpacking friends so that we can continue to make great content for you. Also make sure that you sign up for the gear giveaway before you take off, and please come back and join us next week when we move over to Big Sky Country for a backpacking adventure in Montana. Between now and then, Please have a great week. Get outside, be kind to one another, and enjoy this send-off with the Judd Who's, a fantastic band out of the Black Hills area of South Dakota. Until next week, we'll see you again on Backpacker Get Out More TV. I like to feel in between
us Don't know what I'd do without you Cause I'm a man without a plan without you in it Between us, I like this feeling between us. 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 I like this feeling